Hey, welcome back. Time for five more DM quick tips. Now, these are the tips that I have learned running and playing games over the last 40 years. This is the eighth video of an ongoing series of tips, and I'll go ahead and leave a full playlist down in the description below. So let's get started. Tip number one. When running games, I like to foreshadow future events as much as I can, and I know I've kind of mentioned that before in these tips, but while the party might not go in that direction, I like to know what events are likely to happen based upon what they're doing now. So for my first tip, I suggest creating a bullet point list of possible actions the party might take in the future, and then introduce NPCs that might be encountered later in the campaign. Now, this introduction could be in the form of a bard story, a tavern rumor, or any other way that you want to communicate the information to the players. It does not necessarily mean that the characters need to actually meet with the NPC right away. They can just find out about them simply by reputation. Uh, tip number two, at the same time, don't be afraid to change up that major NPC as the story progresses. In my mind, Every NPC remains nebulous until they actually make contact with the party. Until then, anything the party heard could have just been rumor. So, you know, it's easy to wave away things that don't you know, work or jive with what they find out to be real once they find out the truth. Like I said, it was just rumor. So, you know, once they make contact, though, that NPC solidifies and really doesn't change very much after that. You might have some little nuances, but you're not going to change major things with that NPC after that. What is your favorite way to alter a major NPC? Do you have special powers that you like them to have? Uh, tip number three, though. While I do recommend having a small stable of NPCs that are nothing more than a list of personality quirks and abilities, you know, sometimes you just need to generate something. If you need one quick, and I have found that grabbing the Dungeon Master's Guide is a great place to quickly generate one on the fly. Now that's page 100 of the 1st Edition Dungeon Master's Guide and page 89 of the 5th Edition Dungeon Master's Guide. Those are both great places to start. I'm sure the versions, you know, all the other versions have great things on NPCs too. I just didn't take a look. But otherwise, there are quite a few web pages and old-fashioned books out there. You remember old-fashioned books, right? Anyway, there's a bunch of those out there that are geared towards NPC creation. So you have a massive trove, treasure trove, of just NPC stuff out there. Tip number four. You know, another way I like to do it, I just go cr think of a character from literature and I roll with it. You know, I'm a fan of Myth Adventure series by Robert Asprin, and I have to admit that I have had more than a couple of Oz, Tananda, and Skeev clones show up in my adventures. Maybe they were just cameos, maybe they were just a small part, generally not a big, huge part of the, of the story. But uh, don't be afraid to grab stuff from literature, movies, books, and so forth. And by the way, that is a great series of books if you somehow miss reading them. Highly recommend you find a way to read them and go ahead and do that because they're a great entertaining series of books. Now, do you ever try out your battles without your players at the table? Um, tip number five, I'm going to suggest you try that. You know, especially with that big bad NPC that you created. You know, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I should probably do it more though as it definitely helps to tweak the encounter and make it more memorable. And it certainly helps to take the characters and do a quick dry run of how you think the battle will go. The characters, the character sheets, not the players. Um, I find that when I do that, things just flow much better and everybody seems to enjoy themselves more. And not only that, I remember, oh yeah, this cool um, ability that this character or this uh, creature or this monster or whatever has when I kind of do that and do a quick little dry run. Otherwise, I might forget until I'm kind of reviewing, you know, in the middle of the uh, battle. Oh, yeah, this guy gets to do that. Oh, shoot. Well, I should have done that earlier. So, you know, just for myself, I just like to kind of just do that right away and figure that kind of thing out. But I don't always do it. I should do it more. 
Uh, bonus tip, though. When running your battles, watch your players. Uh, when they start to show signs of boredom, wrap it up and move on to something more interesting. You know, learn to read your table, because that can be a really good experience when you do that. Okay, well, thanks for taking a look. What quick tips would you add? Please let me know down in the comments below. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.